In cloud governance, when a user submits a service request, that request gets routed to appropriate approvers, who review the request and then decide to approve or reject it. This is done through what's called an approval process. To configure an approval process, log on to Cloud Governance, and on the home page, click Settings. On the Settings page, in the Request Management category, click on Approval Process. It's recommended that you make one or more approval processes for each type of service that you're going to make available to your business users. In our example here, let's say we're going to ask our business users to make permission change requests through cloud governance. So I'm going to make an approval process for those types of requests. To do that, at the top we click Create. On the Create Approval Process page, start by giving plus Reddit. On the Create Approval Process page, start by giving the approval process a name and an optional description. Below that, select a category. This will help you locate this approval process later on in the approval process list. Scroll down to see the approval process stages. Approval processes can be single stage up to three stage. A one stage process means that when the request comes in, it will be routed to one person or group for approval. With two or three stage approvals, you do that across multiple users or groups in serial. So someone approves it, then someone else has to approve it, and then someone else finally has to approve it. Approvals can also be auto-approve. Auto-approve means that you don't actually want someone to review, approve, or reject the request. You want the request to automatically go through and then be completed by the system. Auto-approve is great for those types of requests that you don't feel compelled to have someone review, but you still want tracked through cloud governance. All requests, regardless of approval process, are always viewable and reportable. When using approval stages, there's also the option to enable automatic approval. This is primarily useful when the approver actually ends up being the same person making a request. An example might be a department manager. That person could normally be the approver for all requests within their department's SharePoint Online site collection, but if they make a request, there's no reason to make them then review their own request. It can also be useful when the request is coming in from a member of a specific group. Anyone in that group, like IT for instance, the request is just allowed to go through. In this example, we'll do a single stage approval without automatic approvals. If you would like anyone else to be notified, you can enter them here in the CC box. I'll click Next. Each stage of the approval can have a name and a description. That's particularly useful if you're doing multi-stage approvals. If we scroll down a little bit, we can now see that we have to pick someone for the approval to be assigned to. This could be an individual within the organization, but there's also variables that you can select from. Click into the Assign To box and type a dollar sign to see which variables are available. If we scroll down through the list, we can see the requester, manager of the requester, site collection contact, and so on. To view the list of the different variables and their descriptions, over here on the left, click View Available Roles. For our example here, I'm going to select Manager of Requester. So again, if it's someone within a particular department, the request will be routed to their boss. Note that you can also add multiple approvers, at which point the one at a time or all at once option becomes important. Also note that it's the default to allow the approvers to reassign tasks to others. So if this lands in someone's inbox, but they feel someone else should take a look at it, they'll be able to do that. Scrolling down, we see our email settings, who will be notified at what points of the approval process. The default is to notify the approvers when a task gets assigned, so you will receive an email that you are now in charge of approving or rejecting that task, and to also notify the requester if their task is rejected. You have several other options in here, though, that you can choose as well. Finally, do you want to enable duration and escalation? Let's say that an approver receives a request in their inbox, but they happen to be out of office for three days. That means that their request sits there not being acted upon. Duration and escalation allows you to set a time limit for when it will be escalated automatically to someone else. So as an example, let's say that we allow it a one-day duration, 
And after that duration expires, what will take place? We can have it notify someone to let them know that the task is still sitting there waiting to be acted upon. We can have it reassigned so that it then moves from the original approver to someone else. Or we can have it auto-reject the original request. In our example, let's say that we're going to reassign it and we'll have it go to someone in IT. So our logic is, if someone's manager has not acted, it will get pushed over to the IT team. Real world, again, that could be anyone within the organization that you like. Now note, there's also an option to enable reminder. A reminder is created as a separate profile back on your settings page, but you can also jump to it right from here if need be. The logic is, if you have a longer duration, maybe three days or so, then you could set up a reminder email to the person who owns the approval to let them know, hey, this request is still active and still requires your attention. If everything is the way that we want, up at the top, we click on save to save the approval process, but not activate it, which means it's not available to your services, or save and activate if I'm ready to use it now. I'll click on save and activate. Here is our new approval process. And to add it to a service, we go back to our settings page. In the request management category, we go into services. I will create a new service. We built our approval process for our permission changes. You fill out options here on the first page, including name, description, and some other choices and the approval process will be selected on page two of the service. And here it is. I click on the dropdown, select my approval process. It outlines the process for me so I can review to make sure that that's what I want. And down towards the bottom of that section, you'll notice you can even allow approvers to edit this service request. That means that when someone submits the request, if the approver sees something in the request that's inaccurate, for instance, in our example here, the business user is requesting to add someone to the owner's group to their site, but our departmental policy doesn't allow for that, I'd be able to switch to add the other person to the members group for the site. We could then save and activate the service, and it would then be available to my users to go fill out the form and start the approval process. Thanks for watching this short video on how to create and apply an approval process in cloud governance.